We begin tonight with breaking news. Police responding to a shooting on Ike Street. That's not far from Loop 410 and Palo Alto Road over on the southwest side of town. An ambulance also on that scene tonight. Police haven't said who was shot or if anybody has been arrested. People in the area were very emotional. Understandably, they didn't want to speak with us on camera. Officers have been on that scene for about two hours now. Of course, our crew is going to stay there and bring you any updates as they come in. Meanwhile, new details tonight when it comes to the Atascosa arsonist. One man says he was one of several dozens of property owners who have been hit. Now, the sheriff in Atascosa County is saying that at least 42 fires have sparked up there since April. Our John Paul Baraja spoke with a property owner there who says that he almost lost his home. As you can tell, I went ahead and took off the top of the trees. And these trees are good, you know, 15 feet, 20 feet high. Fire was just coming so fast and it was basically encircling the property. Oscar Linares says it was the quick response by several fire departments that saved his Atascosa County home back in June. Now investigators say that fire was started intentionally. It meets the definition of a serial arsonist. I've seen similar cases in the past uh, of a serial arsonist. Here we're up to 42, so this is unprecedented. Atascosa County Sheriff David Soward explains those 42 fires happened within a 25 mile radius over the last three months. The latest one happening July 26th. Soward believes there are more. His department just hasn't been able to find enough evidence to declare them arson. Luckily, so far, no homes have been lost. It's very concerning and, and uh, I think we're very fortunate we haven't had a fire that's <clears throat> completely gotten out of control for <clears throat> extended period of time. The sheriff says the perfect fire conditions due to the drought and wind make an already worrisome arsonist even more dangerous. The United says it has all of the county on edge. Pretty nerve wracking. Every time you hear a siren, you look for your, your, your pro towards your property, you see where there's smoke. The sheriff tells us they're doing everything they can to catch the person or people responsible. They're now offering a $5,000 cash reward for any information that leads to an arrest. Now that reward is only guaranteed through next Wednesday, but he adds if information comes in after that, they could still be eligible. In Atascosa County, John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, John Paul. Tonight, there are still several wildfires that we are monitoring. The latest in Hayes County has burned through 35 acres and is being called the Hermosa Fire. It is 5% contained right now and leading to evacuations near Old Kyle Road and River Mountain Road. Meanwhile, the Smoke Rider fire near the Blanco and Hayes County line has spread to 800 acres and is now 60% contained tonight. And the Big Sky fire is the largest one burning 1,400 acres just north of Fredericksburg. That fire is 50% contained. Our coverage continues online and on our social media pages and over at KSAT.com. The two wildfires forced the Enchanted Rock State Natural Area and Perdinalis Falls State Park to close today. Park officials said they will continue to give updates on social media. Happen again. Uvalde ISD, CISD, excuse me, is delaying a discussion over District Police Chief Pete Arredondo's employment. It's the second time it's happened. Arredondo, of course, has been criticized for the way that he responded to the mass shooting at Robb Elementary. The meeting was supposed to happen tomorrow. It's canceled because Arredondo's attorney cited a scheduling conflict. The district says that it granted the attorney's request for a delay to make sure that Arredondo gets due process. And he's staying on unpaid leave until a new meeting is scheduled. And we're still trying to learn more about the day that the 21 lives were lost in that school. KSAT, along with other media outlets, have filed a lawsuit to obtain information that DPS refuses to release. State Senator Roland Gutierrez filed his own lawsuit to get documents from the agency. A hearing in the senator's case is set for tomorrow. It's at 9 a.m. at a civil court district court in Travis County. Of course, we'll let you know what happens. Now, since that shooting in Uvalde, a lot of parents have wondered about security in their kids' schools. So let's talk about Bernie ISD. It says that it's partnered with local law enforcement to get school resource officers. It's a program that started more than a year ago. Now, Northeast ISD says it's done several more things, like designating mental health police officers and contracting a third-party company to monitor, monitor social media for any posts that are concerning. And SAISD says its measures include a safety committee that's tailored for each school 
also a district wide safety and security committee to help guide safety measures. As for Northside ISD, it says it's been inspecting multiple safety aspects at each of its campuses and it would let families know if anything changes. A conspiracy theorist is finally admitting the school shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary is not a hoax. Alex Jones testified for a second day in an Austin courtroom. Jurors are now set to decide how much he will have to pay the parents of Sandy Hook victims for defamation. Jones previously said the shooting was staged. Jurors heard from Jones and two of the victim's parents. My son existed. Jesse was real. I am a real mom. I can't even describe the last nine and a half years of the living hell that I and others have had to endure because of the negligence and the recklessness of Alex Jones. Uh, it's 100% real. I think Sandy Hook happened, and I think it's a terrible event. The attorney for Jesse Lewis's parents also say Jones has lied about his earnings and the content of his text messages. Mark Bankston says Jones' attorney sent him a digital copy of Jones' cell phone last month including his text messages for the past two years. More witnesses testified in day two of the trial of Jorge Izquierdo. He's accused of killing his girlfriend and leaving the body for the couple's children to find. And today, one of Izquierdo's friends took the stand. Adam Serrano told a jury that he saw Izquierdo's hot temper and says he often argued with Cora Nickel. Serrano says that Izquierdo carried a gun in his car, but he never saw physical violence between the couple. The jury also saw surveillance video of the couple arriving home, but no one leaving through the front door. The day that Nickel died, investigators found the keys to Izquierdo's car along the back fence of that home, and investigators eventually found Izquierdo in California. In other news tonight, another case of monkeypox has been confirmed in San Antonio, first since Friday. So now we have a total of 14 cases of that disease. Tomorrow, Metro Health is hosting a forum to answer all the questions that you have about monkeypox and that's taking place from 7 to 8 p.m. at Woodlawn Point on Donaldson Avenue. And by the way, Spanish and sign language interpreters will be there to answer your questions. Summer break is quickly coming to a close and many students are preparing to head back to school soon. Parents interested in tutoring and after school programs for their kids need to start making some plans right now. The night team's Patty Santos tells us the staffing shortage is making available programs harder to find. That extra set of eyes on campus. South and ISD is gearing up to meet the needs of their students before, during, and after school starting next week. This year, um, we're having a new initiative here at South and ISD where our elementary students are going to have an opportunity to play intramural sports. Director of Guidance and Counseling Charlie Gallardo says they couldn't provide the emotional and academic support for students without their many community partners. We are serving uh, 520. But those community partners are in need of help themselves. Themselves. Unfortunately, we're facing a staffing shortage, so we're not able to serve the 840 that we normally would. SA Youth says there's a waiting list for its after school programs and school hasn't even started. Former educators, um, retired professors, retired teachers, uh, veterans, anyone in the educational or even in the social work field that has experience working with children or families. We need about 50 more um, after school leaders uh, to help fill those positions. Um, there's 30 alone in the SAISD that we need to fill. YMCA after school program directors say filling those jobs could open up slots for 300 kids and if your child is not signed up for a program, time is running out. You can get on a wait list um, and, you know, as soon as we get more staff on board, we can add more children. So make sure you're on that wait list now. Those with older kids are highly encouraged to consider after school sports. There's band, like I said, there's cheer, there's clubs and organizations. Um, there's so many things out there. And we learned that many of these after school programs will actually hire teenagers 16 years and up. So there's another option to keep your uh, older teens busy. We know that uh, part time jobs with SA Youth starts at $12. The Y has a sign up bonus of $250 and their start off uh, pay is $16 an hour. And of course, we have all that information on casehead.com. We'll send it back to you. Thank you, Patty. Meanwhile, some parents have asked about bus shortages impacting school districts. Northside ISD faced that issue last year and they are continuing to hire drivers, but they are not the only district trying to fill those positions and it's already impacting about 1300 families in one area. 
The change in operations at Comal ISD coming up. Also, she's no stranger to controversy, but now that ex-constable says that she's receiving death threats. Case that investigates looks into the investigation that's now underway, and it's next on the Night Beat. There is another wrinkle in the criminal case against former constable Michelle Barrientes Vela. Bear County deputies are now looking into claims that threatening letters were sent to her. Case that investigates learned deputies have more than 30 letters all sent over the past 10 months. Those threats were brought to a judge's attention just last month during a hearing to discuss a potential bond for the former constable. The hearing was called days after Barrientes Vela was accused of being involved in an altercation during the Texas Democratic Convention. The judge did not set a bond, but did bar Barrientes Vela from leaving Bear County. In the meantime, she is set to go to trial on August 22nd for tampering charges. She also faces multiple accounts of official oppression. Now for a look at your headlines in your Nightbeat News Flash. Today, if you can believe it or not, it marks three years since the mass shooting at a Walmart in El Paso. The accused gunman still awaiting trial. Prosecutors want it to start by next June, but the defense wants it delayed until 2025. And today, mourners remembered the 23 people who were killed in that shooting. They held a procession with crosses during that ceremony. A city agency here is getting a new name for 85 years. You've known it as the San Antonio Housing Authority, or Saha, but now it's Opportunity Home San Antonio. President and CEO Ed Hinojosa Jr. has been leading that agency since the last year. He says that staff have been trained to convey new values of equity and compassion, and he hopes the new name will also build trust with the community. The battle for bike lanes on Broadway continues. The state denied the city their redesign in January, and now the city says that it has a new version. The plan would still cut a lane or two to involve bike lanes, but the city believes that it could help keep traffic flowing by synchronizing traffic lights. New medians would also keep cars from turning left and slowing down traffic. The city is now waiting for an official response from TxDOT. And that's a look at your Nightbeat News Flash. Our back to school coverage continues now. We told you Northside ISD is still hiring bus drivers, but it is not the only district looking to fill positions. Comal ISD says they're cutting some bus routes due to a lack of staffing. The night team's Camille Juarez explains what the district and some parents are doing to make sure all the kids get to class. I don't know how they're going to get their kids to school on time and get to work on time, pick them up on time and it's going to be pretty difficult. The seats in Teresa Molina's car will be full this fall. Between her two kids and the five extra students she will take to Johnson Ranch Elementary, Molina and several of their neighbors coordinated a carpool after learning their bus route would be cut. I'm lucky enough to be able to stay home and take my kids to school. It's going to impact a lot of people. It's going to be really hard. Comal ISD says it's short bus drivers for a second year. The 25 openings have forced the district to cut or combine routes. That's expected to affect at least 1,300 families, which is raising some safety concerns among parents. There's barely a shoulder. Last year, off the top of my head, I can think of three accidents that happened right there at the entrance to the school. Comel wants to help parents who may have similar concerns. The district plans to open its schools earlier for students who are dropped off. Uh, this was not a decision that we uh, wanted to make. The only solution to it is that we have bus drivers. To incentivize drivers, the district increased hourly pay to $16.16. They'll also cover the cost to get your CDL license and they offer flexible scheduling. To apply for a bus driver position or to find out if your neighborhood is losing a bus route, we have a link to that on our website. Camelia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. Uh, good information for you to know. And by the way, tomorrow you can check out jobs for bus drivers and other positions with Kamal ISD. It's hosting its final summer job fair. That's happening from 5 to 7 p.m. tomorrow at the District Support Services Building in New Braunfels. All right, let's take a live look outside. Sky 12 over the pyramid right now, 88 degrees. And Sarah? We broke a record today. We did. We tied a record set back in 1998. We got up to 103 today. And didn't it feel like it? Aye, aye, aye. Mm -hmm. Felt like it for sure outside. Uh, and in fact, we had high heat index values today too.
I'll be honest with you, tomorrow's weather pretty much exactly the same as today. We're going to once again challenge a record and the record for the day is 103. Even our low this morning was warm uh, near 80 degrees earlier uh, this morning. And unfortunately, we just don't have a very, very good chance for rain in the coming days. It's going to mainly be hot. That's going to be the big weather story and dry again tomorrow. We're going to be challenging a record uh, getting up to 103 for the forecast high. But you will notice a nice dip in temperatures. It's still going to be hot Friday and Saturday, but there's a good chance that temperatures should stay below 100 degrees. And that's because we're going to have a small chance for rain with this system uh, out to the east here. You can see uh, Gulf of uh, Mexico, little low pressure system right over New Orleans. The rainfall for the day has died down, but earlier today it was producing quite a bit of rain ac across Louisiana. Now, unfortunately, we're not going to see that kind of rain here in San Antonio, but the slow is going to move out to the west, bring us a little bit more cloud cover and an isolated shower or storm or two. The reason why rain will be isolated and not more widespread is because this heat height is still the big weather factor. It's pushing down on the air, preventing widespread healthy rains from developing. So as we look at that uh, future cast, so you can see that low is going to be approaching by Friday. We'll have some coastal showers and storms from that low, and a few of them are going to try to make a run for that I-35 corridor. That's why we've got a 20% chance for isolated showers and storms both Friday and on Saturday. A lot of the Gulf Coast may get some good rain from this, but again, we're only going to be seeing a few isolated showers and storms. Friday and Saturday, our chance for rain is only 20%. We really could use some help from the tropics as far as rainfall is concerned, but unfortunately in the Atlantic, no development is expected over the next five days. And we often see the start of uh, hurricanes off of the coast of Africa here, but there is a huge plume of Saharan dust that's preventing any of these tropical waves from getting going and that's why it has been very quiet and that's why it's going to continue to be quiet at least for the next five days but we are going to start to ramp up on tropic season here soon so we'll keep an eye on that for your thursday tomorrow 78 degrees in the morning sunrise at 6 56 93 at noon 103 for that uh, record tying potential high temperature there and southeast winds will gust up to about 25 miles per hour so while fire danger will not be as high as today we still will see elevated fire danger tomorrow so please use caution otherwise some light saharan dust makes its way into the forecast tomorrow through Saturday. Just some light allergy symptoms for those who are sensitive to it. Otherwise, we're going to be hot back into the triple digits by next week. And if you do get allergies, uh, Dr. Mika Cole says that you should just use a sinus rinse or something like that. That's a good for, uh, for allergies. That's preventive. great advice. All right. Whatever helps. All right, time to check out uh, what's happening with Cowboys Camp. Greg Simmons is out there on the West Coast for us tonight. Got some fire behind you. What's happening there? You know, coming to you from actually Malibu tonight, the very shishi section of the Pacific Coast Highway. When we come back is all the story right now is about Dan Quinn, who has his bosses back when it comes to this season upcoming. And when it comes to Micah Parsons, can he be better? Camping with KSAT, powered by Davis Law Firm. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our live coverage of the Dallas Cowboys training camp. Coming to you from Malibu tonight, right along the Pacific Coast Highway, just across the street from the Santa Monica Mountains. And Dan Quinn with a comment of the day. You know, all season long, there's been so much speculation about the future of Mike McCarthy as a head coach of the Dallas Cowboys, following their early exit in the playoffs after a 12-5 and five finish. So much so, reports indicate Jerry Jones went out of his way to pay extra to keep Dan Quinn on as his defensive coordinator, but only to give him an ace in the hole in case McCarthy stumbled out of the gate. Today, Quinn addressed those reports head-on, saying there's no reason for McCarthy to be looking over his shoulder. I get to to look around some of those corners for Mike to, to point out some things, hey, this might be coming down the road, let's look at this. And so I just wanted in no uncertain terms, make sure I'm looking around the corners. I ain't coming around the corner. Wow, that's quite a statement to make. Now, one of the reasons why Quinn is that for that matter, the rest of the Dallas Cowboys enjoyed so much success on the Dallas D has been the play of Micah Parsons. They say a player makes his biggest jump between year one and year two. But after the rookie season he had as both a linebacker slash defensive lineman, how in the world could that be possible? I don't 
don't believe in pressure. No, I, pressure is non-existent, you know. Um, you know, you kind of have expectations for yourself and what you want to achieve, and that's personal, but um, I think pressure might be other people's aspects of how they view you. And if, if that gets you off your game, then, you know, you're probably in the wrong sport. That's how Micah Parsons looks at the expectations for him after his incredible rookie season. 13 sacks that led to him being named the Rookie Defensive Player of the Year in the NFL. So how can he possibly make a jump in his sophomore season? I just say, you know, create more turnovers, get my hands on the ball. Uh, I've been focusing on my hands and my coverage, um, making sure I got, I'm trying to eliminate all weaknesses in my game. What kind of a weakness could Parsons possibly have after that kind of a rookie run? I wouldn't say I had like a lot of weaknesses, but just not understanding the full concepts of every defense. And, you know, I was growing, going through growing pains throughout the year, um, sometimes guessing, but now that I know, kind of know and figured it out, I just feel way more relaxed. It's not just all about his statistics. You know, he, he, he's going to make others better around him just, just, just because the offense has to treat him differently. Parsons also decided another improvement he can make from year one to year two is his diet. I just wanted to lose weight just to, you know, play lighter and uh, not be as tired. And I, and I would say I probably didn't do it on purpose as much, just fix my diet up, hung up the Chick-fil-A, the Wendy's and stuff like that. And, you know, as you work out, you tend to lose those pounds that you know, fry foods might do to you. With all the early success of young players such as himself, Trayvon Diggs and CeeDee Lamb have enjoyed, do they talk about what they can do together going forward? I don't think it's kind of like a talk. I think it's kind of like, you know, we all got this. I know CD has super high expectations for himself. And when he talks to me, he's telling me how he wants to do such great things. Same with Trey and same with myself. So it's kind of like uh, we all shooting for the stars right now, literally. You know, the one thing Dan Quinn has actually asked his team to do, help improve on their takeaways this year, is creating more forced fumbles. That's after they led the league in takeaways last season. The NFL says it will appeal the ruling by disciplinary judge Sue L. Robinson that said former Texans, now Cleveland Browns quarterback Deshaun Watson, should be suspended for six games without pay for the 2022 season. The NFL had three days to file an appeal, and today they did just that. The league had won it one year indefinite suspension plus a fine. UTSA football fall camp underway next. The UTSA Roadrunners continue their fall work to get ready for their season opener. It was exactly one month from today. Running back Brendan Brady out of Steel High School really wasn't going to return for his super senior season this year, but tells us today that Sincere McCormick's decision to turn pro and in injuries that hit the running back room helped change his mind. My whole mindset was, you know, if Sincere was going to come back, like, I didn't really feel the need for me to come back. I did my time here and contributed the way that I thought was good. And um, and so I was content with that. And so when Sincere declared that he was going to not be in the bowl game and that he was going to, you know, declare for the draft, that kind of kind of put shook things up a little bit because I had already kind of made up my mind at that point. And so um, I wasn't too sure at the time, but I ended up sticking with my decision. That's great to hear. And Stephanie just texted me, by the way, and said, what are you going to do, film the episode of The Bachelor next? <laughs> and, of course, that's why we have the tiki torches. We're in Malibu. What else would you do? We're waiting Back for the rose guys. ceremony. <laughs> when in Rome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Thanks, great Greg. backdrop. All right, thank you. We'll be back after this. Record challenging heat tomorrow is the big weather story. Some light Saharan dust Thursday through Saturday, a chance for isolated rain Friday and Saturday. That's about as good as we can do when it comes to the rain, but hey, it'll knock temperatures down by a couple of degrees and I'll take that. Otherwise, it's going to be triple digits next week. All right, Sarah, thank you. That does it for the night beat. Don't forget, good morning, San Antonio starts at 430. It's been a pleasure having you with us tonight. Thank you so much. Stay cool tonight.